Our country has long held the title of the land of saints and scholars, a tribute to its legacy as a bastion of religious thought and its enduring status as a place where education thrives. It was 1959 when colleges from around the country gathered in Dublin for the inaugural meeting of the Union of Students in Ireland. Initial aims were to defend student rights in Ireland as well as furthering the ability of Irish students to both travel and be represented abroad. It wasn't all plain sailing. Allegations of communism saw the USI referred to by Dr. Michael Tierney, president of UCD, as a terribly dangerous organisation. However, at the same time, the International Student Conference, including USI as a member, was accused of being funded by the CIA. A very necessary organisation at that time, education was just coming just becoming a more universal thing. But out of all this tremendous activity, activism, intellectual excitement, that something practical emerged. Overall, I had a good perception of USI, very professional and extraordinarily necessary. Here was a bunch of people my own age who were taking on government, the establishment, foreign countries, campaigning for people to be freed overseas, campaigning for ourselves. So it was just something that I was just desperate to be part of. The early 1970s saw the USI gain a small but significant sign of acceptance from the government in the form of a grant of £5,000 to fund the administration of the union and to provide stability to enable it to continue its activities. Discussions between USI and NUS, the National Union of Students in the UK, led to a unique bilateral agreement which provided for Northern Irish affiliated unions to have status within both national unions by creating a national union for Northern Ireland called NUS-USI. NUS-USI set an example to politicians on both sides of the border that progress can be achieved by abandoning prejudices and focusing on delivering results. Many of the student representatives who negotiated that historic agreement later went on to play pivotal roles in the negotiation of the Good Friday Agreement. The mid-1970s saw the USI tackling some of the major taboo issues in Irish society, such as homosexuality and abortion. But really and truly, I think the biggest, the biggest question will always be access and funding and enabling young people to, to, to go forward. And any person who decides they want to improve their education and improve their standing. And there's still a fundamental issue around funding of education in Ireland. During my time, fees were the biggest things that were out there, and they're still out there. And the most important thing for us was that we weren't campaigning for ourselves in college at the time. We were campaigning for the people who weren't in college. Each generation brings new and different problems. In 1980, the annual student grant was £600. Overcrowding was a huge issue and became a high priority area of issue for the USI. In December 1983, the Labour Fine Gael Coalition withdrew the automatic entitlement of medical cards from third level students. 1985 saw the election of the USI's first female president, Patricia Hegarty. In the historic Spock versus Grogan case, the then president of USI, Stephen Grogan, and his colleagues were taken to court over disseminating abortion information. Though ultimately losing the case in the European Court of Human Rights, USI succeeded in getting the legislation changed. If USI hadn't been invented, somebody I would have, or somebody would have invented it. It's so important. It's fundamental if you're involved. So I used to sit down in front of classes and say, did everybody here pay their fees? And they'd all say, no. And I'd say, you're very welcome, because that's what USI did in the past. It has always been the most important voice for students in Ireland. And it has provided a consistency of analysis down the years, firmly on the student side, firmly on the side of education. If you don't have young people involved in, in the political system and, and the political structures, then you don't have a political system and there's no hope for the future. It is the student feedback and the quality assurance of the sort of uh, education that they're getting that is now going to be central. Students are represented at absolutely every, every level. So that starts in the classroom in a module where students give feedback on the quality of teaching in that module right throughout the college or university and then all the way up on a national level where students are uh, represented uh, on the higher education authority where funding's been decided. By 1990, the USI had become a very diverse organisation, one which changed rapidly and drew in a diverse mix of people. In 1994, the combination of fee increases, an unfair grant system, overcrowding and a general lack of attention to the plight of student hardships culminated in 15,000 students marching through the streets of Dublin. In 1997, the USI won a long-fought battle to secure a seat on the Higher Education Authority, the statutory planning, funding and policy development body for higher education and research in Ireland. Fees were abolished in 1997. However, 
the £150 charge remained. Students from several of the RTCs staged protests to seek a change in status to an Institute of Technology. When I went to college, there was three of us from Ballyferm, the population of 40,000, who went to Trinity College. Three of us, okay? Now on my mother's block, three out of those four houses have sent children to third level education. And that's why education is so important. And that's why a campaigning group like USI is just the lifeblood. It's just so vital. Yeah, she long will and practice the Gregor fear how to duck. Um Bader Mavanishila Kaylee Noga um Cora no Pay Rode, She Lung will um Desh um Trace of Egg and Fractus Gregor, Dulkin Keeney and Vane Smash in there and Con Aquidge um so could Fractus your curtain keen fresh and must for Dagger Von Shaylesh and Fractus the Nortesh, no and Fractus um you know the Gresgalik no Ella. She lung will the Miklain Le Gwega, Gavek and she'd rolled over hain, Gavek and she'd oyched over hain in ain't smart in there and she was shin on what? It's an important facet of, of student unionism to be involved in social issues and to take on issues that other people are afraid to because when you're young you don't have the fear that you might have when you're older because you don't have the mortgage, you don't have the responsibilities, you don't have the children. Society needs educated people and those people that are in third level education have to fight for rights of themselves and the wider world around them and we're doing it. Those challenges are ahead of USI and I know that they'll pick it up and do it with gusto like we've done for 50 years. Well I think it's now officially and formally recognised as an integral part of the education system. They can act as the kind of eyes and ears of students back to people like me, back to government, uh, about what the impact of reform uh, is having on students. I recently sought um, recommendations for them for the Appeals Board for the Student Support Grant system as an indication that they are now very much a part of the system. What, what's changed in USI is that we're now bringing solutions to the table. Uh, not only do we go out and campaign on the streets and say what's wrong, but we also pose solutions on how we want to see things fixed. And this is all part of USI and the students of Ireland uh, taking their place going forward and being in the driving seat and deciding Ireland's future. The initial period of this decade saw the USI with its highest ever membership. Nurses saw the abolition of fees for their degrees and over 18,000 students protested to demand a better grant and the abolition of the capitation fee. The start of the new millennium reaffirmed the union's worth to students and the USI galvanized itself around its central mission of fighting for the rights of students to be able to access education and to have an acceptable standard of living. The central issue in this decade was to fight off the reintroduction of fees and the USI protests spread like wildfire across the country. Following 9-11, USI travel, better known as Use It, collapsed and there was a major political turmoil within the union. I would regard USI as being very successful. Of course you don't win every campaign. Of course you don't. And, you know, when you're looking at it across so many years and decades, it has been a, a very fine organisation. I think they've established themselves as a really uh, effective, constructive group of people. Students were at the forefront of rights for women, at the forefront of rights for disabled uh, people, at the forefront of rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgendered people, and we've been at the forefront of rights for younger people. Education is transcendent. It transcends. It transcends one generation to another and it changes your own life chance. And in itself, in itself, it's of intrinsic value on every level in, in our human condition. There was a proposed reintroduction of fees, but the USI beat that back. 2004 and 2005 saw grant increases dramatically after years of USI campaigning. During the accommodation crisis, the USI campaigns for decent student accommodation. Following the economic collapse, the USI seeks to stem the tide of emigration. At 50 years of age, the USI beats back fees and loan schemes and graduate tax under the Fianna Fáil Green Government. The USI secures the introduction of graduate internship scheme. The introduction of Student Support Act heralds massive changes to the grants scheme. In Ireland's largest ever student march in November 2010, 44,000 marched to protect the grant, to cap the registration fee and to end graduate emigration. During the 2011 general election campaign, Labour's education spokesperson Rory Quinn and party leader Eamon Gilmore sign a USI pledge not to increase fees, to protect the grant and to work to end graduate emigration. The USI registered 15,000 students to vote for election in 2011. I think all colleges should be encouraged to join. You know, the only way to change the policy of the National Union is to be involved in it. So being inside that decision-making process is vital. 
an organisation like the Department of Education and Skills at official level can do business with them and that political parties ignore USI at their peril. I have to say it's probably the best thing I ever did in my life. I think I probably got more, I learned more from my time in the student union than I did in any course I've ever done. It's a very good story to tell and I think the future will be as important if not more important than its past. I think, as I say, unity is strength in York or Hurley Kalitz. But, but certainly USI's motto is together we're stronger and it's of vital importance that every single student across the island is a member of USI.